Pastor Brandon coming to you live from Salem Springs, Arkansas with another Fishers of Men video broadcast. And we thank you for joining with us today. For those who will be joining with us, I do want to thank you ahead of time for joining with us. And uh, we will be talking about, uh, we'll be getting into part two of our series. Last time that we I preached, we I taught on part one, which was showing how God is a male and not female. And we also got into what is Shekinah, where does she originate from, and how it's affecting and how it had released into Freemasonry, which then in turn released into the churches. And we talked, we had, we laid some groundwork for this particular, we laid, we laid groundwork for what is the Shekinah glory. And so this, and this time we're going to be talking, we're going to be getting into part two of this series. It is the Shekinah glory exposed part two, Astaroth. Now before we begin... I do have to kind of warn that it is a little graphic and I'm going to try to be mindful of those who are watching and those who are tuning in uh, but it is a little graphic and so I'm going to try to you know be respectful to all those who might be of younger age who may be listening in and on and uh, just pray for me. Uh, while I go through this, there's some stuff that, you know, my flesh doesn't want to say, but I'm going to say it anyways because it needs to be taught. <coughs> so with that said, if you have your King James Bibles with you, if you can turn with me to Revelation chapter 2, verse 20. Again, that was Revelation chapter 2, verse 20. And we're going to start there, and we're just going to go everywhere in the Bible. and Well, not everywhere, but we're just going to go just... Here a little, there a little. Amen. That's what we need to do. Again, that was Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2, verse 20. It says, Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication. And to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Now, <clears throat> let's give. I'm going to give a little background here. This particular context is talking. Uh, Jesus is is talking to the church of Thyatira, and Thyatira was a very wicked church. Had allowed Jezebel, and had allowed all these things to enter into the church, like fornication and and and. And, and eating things sacrificed to idols and stuff that is just flat out an abomination in the sight of God. And so in this particular church, uh, Jesus, he's very upset. He's very angry. It's so angry when you read on that, uh, you know, actually I'll, I'll just read you the verse. In verse 23 it says, And I will kill her children with death. And all the church, all the church, and all the churches shall know that I am He which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto you every one of one of you, I will give unto every one of you according to your works. So Jesus Christ is really extremely angry with this particular church. Okay, now <clears throat> how this might fit in. Well, let's, 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 let's go back up to verse 20 of chapter 2 in Revelation. And let's, let's, uh, let's read this again. It says, Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel. What we need to understand is, if you don't know the old, old English, sufferest, what that means is to allow. So in other words, this church is allowing Jezebel into the church. Now, it may not, and I don't personally think, and here's the thing, it's not the actual physical Jezebel. What I also, what I think this could mean 
in, in my opinion, and I might be wrong, is that it's the, it's either those who have the spirit of Jezebel, or perhaps, you know, and, I, and that's probably going to be most likely the case. I think it's those, in my opinion, uh, you know, that it's this church has allowed people with this particular spirit of Jezebel to come into the church. And that's dangerous. Because when you do that, you defile the church. The church gets defiled. The church becomes unprofitable. You know why? Because Jezebel hates the word of God. Jezebel hates God's people. She does. She don't like God's people. She don't like God's word. She wants to be an authority. And I'm going to tell you something. There are many churches in America today that are like this church. They have allowed Jezebel to creep in. And guess what? That church has, got, has become ruined and defiled and corrupt. Now, I, I, what I'm about to say here is going to be kind of hard to hear for a lot of people. Okay, this is going to get a little graphic. So if you have children, this would be one of the times you might want to have them leave. Because what I'm about to say is going to be a little bit graphic. Just a little bit. Okay? But to be sexually immoral is a form of worship to Astroth, i.e. Jezebel. I'll repeat that again. To be sexually immoral is a form of worship to Astroth. What does this mean? It means sex outside of marriage. Now, there are probably people who have done this and have repented for, from it. And I want to assure you that those who've done it without, those who've done it as, as unbelievers and have turned to God, repented of their sin, and is now serving the Lord, I want to assure you that those people who do that, okay, God has forgiven them of their sin. Okay? I don't want anyone to misconstrue what I'm saying. Okay? But when you have all these pagans who, who are God haters and they don't repent of their sin, you know, you have all these these perverts and all these sexually immoral people. You know, they do this stuff as a form of worship to Astaroth, to Jezebel. And it's not right. It is wrong. And people need to repent. People need to repent of their sin. People need to get people need to get saved. And how do and how do people get saved? It is repentance on a salvation. People need to repent of their sins, ask that the Lord will forgive them, to cleanse them, to wash them, to fill them up with the Holy Ghost. Amen? That's what people need to do. Now, if you got your Bibles with you, let's turn to 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 22. Again, that was 2 Kings chapter 9, uh, chapter 9 verse 22. <clears throat> This is what it says. It says, And it came to pass when Jerome, uh, Jerome saw Yehu, that he said, Is it peace, Yehu? And he answered, What peace, so long as the whoredoms of thy mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many? We understand here that Jezebel is a witch. Jezebel is a witch. You know why? Because it said that the scripture told us that she has many witchcrafts and she has many whoredoms. You, you know what Jezebel does? She likes to go whoring around with multiple people. You know, the thing is, when we have all these perverts trying to go around, you know, going around taking the innocency from these innocent kids. And their innocency goes away because these perverts violate them in ways that are unspeakable. 
The spirit behind that is Jezebel. And she's a wicked, vile spirit. Amen? I'm going to tell you something. You come across the spirit, you be sure to have the word of God on you. You know why? Because Jezebel hates, hates male authority. You want to get rid of Jezebel? Turn the light on. She'll leave. Because she don't like it. Okay? So, Jezebel is a whore. But we also see she's a witch. Because she has witchcrafts. And I'm going to tell you something. Anyone who practices witchcraft is a witch. And by the way, either a witch for a female or a warlock for a male. Witches and warlocks are the same thing. And this is going to strike people really hard in the heart. And people will probably hate me for saying what I'm about to say. I don't care. I'm going to tell you something. There is only two religions on the face of this earth. It is Bible Christianity and witchcraft. If it's not Bible Christianity, it is witchcraft. And God says you're not to do it. God says you're not to do witchcraft. Why do you think God has all the has these commandments? Why? It's not to pick on you. We we see here's the thing. We can't keep the commandments. But the thing is, those commandments God has used as a rod, so when we do something, we're gonna get chastised. And God's gonna say, Don't do it again. Okay, but I'm going to tell you something too, is that God feels very strongly against witches. Okay, he does. He don't, God does not like witches. Let me tell you, let me show you in scripture. If you've got, uh, if you can turn with me to Exodus 22, verse 18. Exodus, the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 22, verse 18. Exodus 22, 18. <clears throat> Here's what it says. And it's a very short verse, but this will show you how much God doesn't like witch, witches. Okay? Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. I'm going to tell you something. Witches do a thing called astral, projecti astral projection, which is where they can leave their body and they can try to curse, they can, they can curse people out of their body. But you wanna know something that the Lord showed me is that when these witches leave their body, there's like this silver cord that's attached to them and their body. And so, if you wanna get rid of them, you cut the silver cord. In the name of Jesus Christ, I cut the silver cord. By the way, that cord will be that cord will be cut, and they won't live anymore. We have to learn spiritual. We have to learn how to fight spiritually. Because if we don't know how to fight spiritually, we will lose. Especially when it comes to Jezebel rearing up her ugly head. And I'm going to tell you something. It's a vile, vile spirit. Amen? So, we see from this scripture, God feels very strongly against witches. God, God don't like witches. He don't. Okay? And I'll tell you, I'll give you an example of how much God hated Jezebel. By the way, Jezebel could have repented and it says in Revelation that Jesus gave a space of her, space to her to repent. But the problem with Jezebel is she won't repent. Okay? She won't. So with that said, if you could turn with me to go back. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 21. <clears throat> Again, 1 Kings chapter 21. If you all believe the Bible this evening... Uh, Shout and praise the Lord for that. Amen. Let's let's uh, God's word sets people free. Actually, God's word makes people free. There's a difference. God makes 
God's word makes people free. Amen. And so let's go to uh, 1 Kings chapter 21. We're going to go to verse 23. It says, And of Jezebel also spake the Lord, saying, The dogs shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. See, Jezebel was so wicked. Jezebel's death went basically like this, is that three eunuchs took Jezebel, threw her out, threw her, threw her out of a window, and dogs came and ate her. And by the way, when dogs eat, they're going to leave a, a little gift. That was basically Jezebel, was dog's dung. And that's how much God hated Jezebel. God did not like Jezebel. She was wicked. Jezebel was the queen of Israel, and she enticed her husband Ahab to lead all of Israel astray, to follow after Baal and Ashtoreth. Amen? Now, Jezebel was considered in her day as a queen, a queen witch because she had 400 priests of Ashtoreth at her table, which shows that she was in charge. Jezebel incited her, incited her husband, King Ahab, to abandon the worship of God for worship with Baal and Ashtoreth. By the way, Baal and Ashtoreth are cohorts. They work together. Okay? They work together. And Baal and Ashtoreth are two false deities don't ever get mixed up in. Okay? Because they call for child sacrifice, and it's not right. Because I'm going to tell you something. Children are a gift from God, and God has a purpose for, the, for children. Don't ever get mixed up with the worship of Baal and Ashtoreth. Don't ever get mixed up in that. Because it's not right, and it's going against what God says. Now, if Jezebel was a witch and worshipped Ashtoreth and Baal, that would make Ashtoreth the female spirit of witchcraft. And if, if Ashtoreth is the female spirit of witchcraft, that means Shekinah is a female spirit of witchcraft because Ashtoreth and Shekinah are the same being, but just different name. Now, if you have any questions, really quickly, I'm, I'm going to kind of just go over this real quickly. But if you have any questions, feel free to go back to the, other, the first part of the video, the, uh, the Shekinah Glory Exposed Part 1. And watch that. That might kind of give some background as to, you know, what you know why I say what I say in this particular teaching. So, if you want to go back, if I, I encourage you to go back to watch the first one, and at, at some point, and uh, you, you'll kind of understand what I mean. <clears throat> but really, Shekinah and Ashtoreth, they are the same, but it, it, they're the same false deity. It's just different name because of different cultures and the, and the different cultures and different languages and stuff like that stem back from Genesis 11 where the people rebelled against God and God scattered their language they, he, God confound their language and it caused them to scatter that's what happened and so it's you got to keep in mind that even though it's a different name it's the same spirit okay now, in 1 Kings 11.5, it says, For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the, the abominations of the Ammonites. Now, this is going to get a little graphic, too, and, and I'm going to try to not get too graphic. But Ashtoreth is the goddess of witchcraft, i.e. sex and nature worship. And what I mean by sex, meaning immoral. Because we got to remember, too, is that Sex is indeed a gift that God gave between a husband and a wife that are married together. But even though God gave that as a gift, Satan will take it and pervert it. Amen? That's what happens. And we have to understand when it's being perverted. We have to see and understand the perversion of, of, you know, we have to understand between the, the, the clean and the perversion. Amen? Whatever God does is good, but whatever Satan does is going to be the opposite and the perversion of what God had intended it for. Amen? I'm sorry, that was a little confusing. I'll try to not be as confusing. 
Uh, anyways, uh, let's see. Like Jezebel, Astrath calls herself a prophetess and has been known to tell the future, which is how she can mimic the Holy Ghost. Now, what I said in the last video too is that the Astroth actually has the capability, like um, Astroth, Jezebel, Shekinah has the capability of mimicking the Holy Ghost. And how she is able to do this is because she's been known to tell the future. Okay, she's been known to tell the future. That is how she mimics the Holy Ghost. Okay, now Astroth is a self appointed prophetess and is not ordained of God. Okay, now I'm gonna get into some, some pretty tough stuff coming up here, and I'm probably gonna be hated for it. I don't care, I'm gonna say it. Okay, we see that there are women who claim to be pastors appointed by God. But I'm going to tell you something. No woman is to be a pastor. That is not what God intended for a woman to do. Okay? I'm going to name two names. Joyce Myers and Paula White. The two biggest liars from the on the face of the earth. The two biggest two the two biggest two-faced fork-tongued liars. That's what they are. They're liars. And I'll tell you why. Because they claim to be pastors, and yet just them claiming that and being up behind a pulpit, thinking that they can pastor a church, by them doing that, they are in violation of God's word. And I'm going to prove it from Scripture. Okay? Turn with me to 1 Timothy chapter 3. If you got your King James Bibles, turn with me to 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2. And kind of for the sake of time, I'm going to kind of read it from my notes here. Uh, but uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2, it says, A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife. Stop right there. It says the husband of one wife. God did not say the wife of one husband. If God wanted the wo if God wanted a woman to be to be a pastor, it would have said the wife of one husband. It doesn't say that. It says the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given hospitality, apt to teach. By the way, the, Jeze the Jezebel spirit is a drunken a drunk a drunken spirit. It's the same spirit, I, I, I'm willing to bet two to one, that Rodney Howard Brown, when he goes around getting people drunk, he's getting people drunk by the spirit of Astroth, Jezebel, Shekinah. You know why? Because Jezebel wants to get drunk off the saint's blood. Jezebel is a spirit that's drunk. God says don't get drunk. Given hospitality apt to teach. Titus chapter 1 verses 6 through 7. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of right or unruly, for a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, nor striker, not given to filthy lucre. Here, the next verse is going to strike in the hearts of women that have this particular spirit and don't like male authority. 1 Corinthians 14.34 Let your women keep silent in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. Let, let me tell you something about that. Ladies, if you want to post scripture on Facebook, Twitter, and any social media, 
you go right ahead and do it as much as you want. If you want to teach kids Sunday school or be part of the nursery or, or anything in the church, you can do whatever you want in the church except be a pastor and a deacon. Those two offices are closed off. Only they are closed off for the woman and is only appointed unto the man to have that office. Amen? There's no reason why these women should be going around claiming to be pastors. If, if a woman comes up to you and says, I feel called a pastor, don't believe them. Because my Bible says that, that that pastor and deacon are not ordained for a woman. They are ordained for a man. And guess what? That is really hard to hear. Probably to a lot of people it's really hard to hear. But I don't care. Pastors are pastors today are so lazy and so such bunch of fraidy cats. They don't want to get up and start teaching stuff like this because they don't want to lose money. Everything, it seems like, with most of these churches has to do with filthy lucre. And guess what? The spirit of Jezebel is behind that. The spirit of Jezebel is behind all these perverts trying to violate kids and their, and their, and their mothers. The spirit of Jezebel is behind, you know, pastors getting greedy with filthy lucre. And Jezebel is behind all these other false damnable heresies that are getting into the church such as this particular one the Shekinah glory because it all stems from Jewish mysticism the Kabbalah which has been leaked to Freemasonry which has been leaked into the churches Jezebel is responsible and that particular spirit I do not like I'm quite passionate about that too that spirit, my anger is kindled against that spirit. My anger is kindled against those who suffer that, that spirit to enter in their churches. Because they don't care. They just don't care. Now moving on. Um, the thing is, God knows what's going to happen in the future. Okay, Shekinah is known to tell the future. That's how she mimics the Holy Ghost. Okay, but God knows what's going to happen from the future. He know He's the beginning and the end, the first and the last, and He knows the beginning and the end and everything in between. Okay, and then turn with me to Jeremiah chapter one verse five. It says, "Before I formed thee in the belly, uh, belly I knew thee, and before that thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations." Okay, uh, Psalm thirty-seven twenty-three. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Matthew twenty-six thirty-four. It says, Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crew, thou shalt deny me thrice. I'm going to tell you something. Jesus said that to Peter, because Peter said, oh, Lord, I won't deny. I won't. I would. I will. I won't deny. But guess what? Jesus, Jesus said, you will deny. And, and that scripture that we just read proves it. You know why? Because Jesus foretold to Peter that he would deny him three times. Before the cock crew. But I'm going to tell you something. Peter was forgiven of what he did. And Peter went on to preaching a message that won 3,000 souls to the Lord. Amen? Now, John chapter 13, verse 26 to 27, it says, Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give sop when I have dipped. And when he dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after that sop, Satan entered into him. Then Jesus said unto him, That thou doest do quickly. If God knows what's going to happen in the future, so does His Spirit. Amen? 
Jesus Christ, God, who is God in the flesh, if he knows the begin, if he is the beginning and the end, and he knows everything that's going to happen, because he's God, he knows beginning and end and everything in between. So does his spirit. But the spirit of Shekinah, the spirit of Jezebel, will mock that and mimic it, because, she, like I said a couple times, is that Shekinah is a spirit that is known to tell the future. And I'm going to tell you something. That's a fortune teller. Shekinah is a fortune teller spirit. By the way, we're supposed to avoid them. We're supposed to be avoiding fortune tellers, wizards, people with familiar spirits. That is why Saul... Got, Saul got himself in big trouble. And by the way, if you notice that after when Saul, the first king of Israel, consulted one with a familiar spirit, he fell on his sword. God loves his kids. He loves... The Bible says that, that Jesus paid the price not for our sin, but for the sin of the whole world. It is not God's will for any to perish, but all to come to everlasting life. Really quickly here, in 1 John 5, 7, it says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. I'm going to tell you something. I do not know how that works. I don't know how that works. I don't. But I believe it. I believe it because that's what that that's what God said. I may not understand it, but the Bible says lean not on your own on lean not on your own on earth, lean not on your own understanding. Amen. Now I want to get I want to tell you guys something here real quick. And I'm going to close. The good Lord Jesus Christ paid the price for your sin. He paid it in full on the cross. Jesus said, it is finished. Not partially finished. It is finished. You know what that means? That Jesus Christ paid the price in full. He paid the price in full. Now, I'm going to say, now, Jesus Christ, and like I said, it is not God's will for any to perish. The Bible also says that today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow might be too late. You know, as a matter of fact, when I get done here, we might be going home. We don't know. It could happen. I don't know when we're going home. But we're getting, we're getting so close to going home. It is no laughing matter. Today is the day of salvation. And... We need to take God's call of salvation seriously. Unbelievers, I'm going to tell you something. If you're involved with witchcraft, if you're involved with in, uh, immorality, fornication, adultery, let me give you some hope. Okay? God loves you. He'll forgive you if you go to Him and repent of your sin and ask Him into your heart and life. Okay, God loves you. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, so that whosoever believeth on Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm going to tell you something. If you are here, are whosoever, you can. If you're not saved, you can be saved. The Lord loves. He, the Lord loves you. He doesn't want he, he doesn't want he doesn't want anyone to go to hell. But unfortunately in this day and age people are going to go, you know there's a lot of people who are re rebellious to God. So I want to encourage you today that if if you don't know the Lord I want you to think on what I said and if you're wondering how do I become saved how do I get how do I become saved? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's very simple. 
whoso shall, who, if you confess, if you confess with your mouth and believe within your heart that Jesus Christ is who He says He is, you will be saved. You will be saved. And I'm going to tell you something. God loves you. He loves all His kids. Anyways, with that said, um, I know I said some things today that were a little bit graphic. And I said some things today that were quite hard to hear. But it needs to be said. Next time, when we come together, I'm going to be getting into part three in this series. And part three in this series is going to be about witchcraft in the churches. We're going to be talking about the witchcraft that has entered in the churches. Because I'm going to tell you something. Shekinah is a spirit of witchcraft. And so in the third part, we're going to be taking a look at what, what constitutes as witchcraft. And we're going to take a look, you know, what's we're going to be taking a look at that within the church. Because a lot of the a lot of the American churches today have allowed Jezebel, and because they have allowed Jezebel, they have allowed her witchcrafts. Anyways, with that said, I'm going to be signing off to I'm going to be signing off for the evening. I love you all. I really do. If I if I didn't love you, I wouldn't be preaching stuff like this, and I wouldn't be preaching the hard stuff. But if if no one's going to, someone's going to have to. My prayer is, Lord, send me. And I'm going to tell you something. If pastors don't want to preach the hard stuff, this is going to sound kind of mean. But, and I apologize, but if pastors don't want to speak on the hard stuff, get out of the way and let, people, let those who, who want to do it, do it. Because God wants people that are obedient and not disobedient. Anyways, with that said... Uh, we will be uh, probably on Thursday we'll be coming back I'll be preaching on the witchcraft in the churches uh, till then I love you all you have a great and fantastic Monday God bless you until then thank Bible God bless we'll see you later bye